Hello, it's Simon Suchi here. And in this property education video, I'm gonna share with you the answer to a question I'm being asked all the time, which is, is now a good time to invest in UK property? A lot of people are worried about the massive uncertainty. A lot of people are saying, is there going to be a property market crash in 2023 or even a housing market crash in 2024? People are worried about the interest rate crisis. And there's no doubt that it is difficult to invest at the moment for many, many reasons, which is why many amateur investors are sitting at the side waiting to see what happens. However, I would suggest if you know what you're doing, it's absolutely a great time to be investing in property. And I explain why in this video. In fact, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna share with you some of the lessons that I've gained from the 20 years I've been teaching people like you how to become more successful investors. I'm gonna talk about the changes I've seen in the property market over the last 20 years, and also what I think is gonna happen over the next 20 years and specifically what this means for you and your property investing. I'm also going to share with you the five top tips that I've learned from teaching people like you how to be successful investors. So we're going to talk about the property market. We're going to talk about financing your property deals. We're going to talk about interest rates. We're going to talk about the competition. And we're going to talk about specific strategies as well. So I've got a lot to cover in this video. Oh, by the way, if you like this video, please do like it. It helps the algorithms. If you've got a comment, please post below and I'll try and come and answer as many of those as I can. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, I highly recommend you do that and hit the bell icon, then anytime you bring out a new video, which is about two videos a week, you'll be notified as soon as they come out. Because some of these videos are time sensitive, and you need to watch them as soon as they come out. Some of them are about strategies, and you can watch them whenever. Anyway, let's get on with this. And let me answer the question, is now a great time to be investing in the UK property market? So let's talk about the market, first of all. Well, over the last 20 years, we've had a lot of change. And that's going to happen. Every market is cyclical. It's going to go up and it's going to come down. If we go back to the early 2000s, there was a real boom from about 2001 up to 2007 at the peak of the last market, just before we had the global financial crisis. The credit crunch happened, started in America in 2007, came over to the UK. We saw Northern Rock was the first bank that fell in November 2007. And obviously the credit crunch and the price house market crash happened in 2008. And it took a couple of years, but by about 2010, it sorted itself out. And it really has been growing since then for the last 12 years. And now, in 2023, we're seeing this property market correction. Prices are coming down. It's different circumstances now, this year, and it will be next year compared to what it was the last couple of years. So if you have been investing in property the last decade, and maybe you're quite successful, and you've got a good sized portfolio, be careful. Because what you, what you did historically for the last 10 years may not be the best thing to do moving forward. Now, what's going to happen to the property market in the next 20 years? Well, the answer is nobody knows. However, I wouldn't be surprised if there was at least one property market crash. At that time, it's bound to happen. The other thing is you need to remember that we live on an island. It's an island with a limited amount of accommodation and an increasing population. The population is increasing because we have higher growing um, uh, birth, birth rates, growing population. We have longer life expectancy. And of course, we have immigration into the UK as well. So all of this is putting pressure on the need for accommodation. And the government statistics are we need about 300,000 new homes every year, but we're only building about 150 to 200,000, depending on who you listen to. But the point is there's not enough accommodation. So even if we do have another crash in the future, which I'm sure will happen in the next 20 years, as long as you're holding long term, it doesn't matter. As long as you can afford to hold those properties, they're making cash flow, and you know, of course, you can rent them out. So you might want to check the five golden rules of property investing, which is another video on this YouTube channel, and also so what I write about in my book, Property Magic. Let's talk about financing and mortgages. And obviously right now, high interest rates is a real problem for many property investors. Going back prior to the credit crunch, 
you know, in 2007, 2006, at the peak of the last market, as an investor, you could get an 85% loan to value mortgage on your buy to let property. If you were buying your own home and you had enough good enough income, you get up to 125% buying a house. So you're buying your own home for 200,000, the bank would lend you 250 thousand pounds now that seems crazy now right but it was happening and there was a lot of irresponsible lending and irresponsible borrowing before the last credit crunch which is why that ultimately happened now things are different so that's not really going to happen again because banks are typically lending up to 75 percent on a buy to let property and up to 95 maybe even 100 percent on your own home as long as you have a good enough income Interestingly, now, if you are a portfolio landlord, which means you have more than four properties, any lender giving you a mortgage is one going to look not just that property that you're buying, but also your entire portfolio to stress check it and make sure the rental income is enough. So in fact, lenders do more checks on more experienced landlords than they do on new investors coming into the market. And just to dispel a myth here, a lot of people think, oh, I want to do a strategy like HMOs, houses of multiple occupation, because that's a really good cash generating strategy. But they think, well, I've spoken to someone who says I need to have experience to do that. And you've got to be very careful who you listen to. A lot of people who are in the industry only have half of the information because they're right there are a lot of lenders who will only lend you money for an hmo if you have hmo experience but there is at least one lender who will give someone with a completely new company with no track record at all an hmo mortgage for up to six tenants so you can absolutely do the things you want to do but you need to make sure you get the right knowledge and the right information for people who are actually doing this stuff and understand how this works now let's talk about interest rates as well because of the really high interest rates right now that are causing lots of problems however if we go back in history before the credit crunch the bank of england rate was about five and a half six percent so it's not that dissimilar to what it is right now the problem is we've all become very spoilt over the last 12 years with a very low record low bank of england base rate at just 0.5 percent what that means is many investors for a number of years have had really good cash flow even for single let properties but as rates have gone up which they were always going to go up it's eaten away at that profit and when you bring in things like section 24 which came in in april 2017 which is a change to the way we're taxed as investors what it means is if you own property in your own name which many landlords did. And if you're a high rate taxpayer, which many landlords are, and you've got mortgages, which most landlords have, it means you're paying a lot more tax on the profit that comes in from your rental income. So what that means is there are some landlords right now who might have single let properties. They were making lots of money for the last decade. Now rates have gone up. They're not making any money at all. And yet on paper, they're making a profit. So they're going to have to pay some money to the tax man later at the end of the financial year. This is one of the many reasons why many landlords are selling up. But we'll come back to that later on. Let me come back to interest rates. So ever since I've been teaching for the last 20 years, we've always got our students to calculate their deals based on a 6% interest rate. And, you know, like four or five years ago, where people were getting 3% mortgages, they were saying, Simon, why don't we use 3%? I said, look, rates are going to go up at some point. You want to factor that in to make sure when rates go up, you're still making money on your property. That's why we've always used 6%. And I guess we were proved to be right um, that that's what you should use in your calculations. Now, what's going to happen to interest rates in the future? Well, a lot of people feel that there's huge uncertainty right now. We might see another interest rate rise. Who knows? Inflation is starting to come down, which is good, but the Bank of England seem to want to push it down further. And so they might use interest rates again as a macroeconomic tool to try and control inflation. However, the long term view is that the rates are probably going to come down. And whereas I would normally, prior to the recent interest rate crisis, I would get maybe five year fixed mortgages when I was remortgaging my properties. I've done a few recently where I only got two year fixes. 
And that's because I believe in two years, the rates will be low. Now, I can't give you financial advice. That's purely my own opinion. You need to decide what's right for you. But we think rates are probably going to come down. Let's talk about competition. And this is really, really important. A lot of people think, well, is it a really good time to invest in UK property now that all these other people doing it? Is it such a good idea? And certainly over the last 20 years, there have been a lot more people becoming aware of property investing and why it's such a smart thing to do. With all the TV programs about it, and also with the advent of the internet, which 20 years ago, it was only just really starting, um, but there were, there were platforms came up like Zoopla and Rightmove and Spareroom that made property investing so much easier. So because of this, it's now more accessible for more people to do. However, if you actually look at the stats, it's interesting that since about 2015, the number of landlord property sales compared to landlord property uh, purchases um, is actually going down. So what this means is more and more landlords are selling properties. There are less and less landlord properties available. So it might not feel like it, but actually the competition is getting less. Now, in any industry, you always have some people who are entering the industry and starting new, and someone who are exiting and retiring. But we're seeing more and more landlords exiting and retiring the market right now because of Section 24, because of the Renter Reform Bill, because of EPC requirements, all these things I've done YouTube videos about, go and look them up. But this means that more and more landlords are selling up, they're cashing in their portfolio, which means there are gonna be less properties available for rent, which means less supply, which means rents are going to go up. So those of us who are staying in the game are probably going to do very well from this. And you know what? There are lots of other people teaching people how to invest. There's so many more people who are just popping up on YouTube and, you know, they're popping out of nowhere. And my concern is that some of those people have been investing themselves for less than 10 years and training people even less than that. And they've only been investing in a rising market. We don't have a rising market anymore. And what happened last time when we had the credit crunch and the prices all came down, there were many, many property training companies in the mid 2000s, and at least half of them went bust because they didn't know how to invest in a declining market. So just be very careful who you're listening to. Make sure they've got a good long period of experience and they understand from personal experience what happens when property markets come down. That leads very nicely to the next thing I want to talk about, which is strategies. Now, your strategy should adapt to the property market conditions. And right now we're seeing this buyer's market. We're seeing the market come down. And there are certain strategies that might have worked really well over the last decade or so, such as flipping properties where you buy something, you renovate it and flip it on to another investor at a profit. And things like off plan where you buy something even before it's built. And the idea is the value goes up before you actually buy it. Those are great strategies in a rising market. But we don't have a rising market anymore. So you need to change what you're doing. Now, there is something that works all of the time and it's easier in certain markets and right now it's going to be easier and that is looking for what we call a motivated sellers i talk about it in my book property magic a lot a motivated seller is someone who's got a property related problem and they need to get rid of that property what they need is speed and certainty and if you can give them that speed and certainty they will be far more flexible on either the price or the terms of the sale which means you might be able to do things like purchase lease options or vendor finance, which is a great way of controlling or acquiring property using very little of your own money. Now, in any market, even in a booming market, there's only going to be about 5% of sellers who are truly motivated. In a declining market like the one we're in right now, maybe as many as 10% of sellers might be truly motivated. So there are going to be more motivated sellers in the current market. And guess what? There are less buyers in the current market, which means right now, literally right now, you should be out there looking for great properties because they are all over the place. Then once you've got a property, you need to say, okay, how do I use this? And what's the best strategies? And my view in the current market conditions, there are two strategies which you should be focusing on. One of them is HMOs, houses of multiple occupation, where you rent out individual rooms to separate people and you get a much bigger income than if you just rent out the whole house. And then the other one is serviced accommodation or short term rentals, where you're renting to either holiday makers or corporate clients or contractors. And they're very short stays, 
could be a couple of days, could be a couple of weeks, but it's not certainly a six month contract you might have in an HMO. And because it's a shorter contract, it's a much higher rental income. Now, in both those cases, HMOs and SA, you pay the bills and in SA, you do the, the laundry and the cleaning as well. But even after all the expenses, both these strategies should create at least a thousand pounds profit every single month after all expenses. Just think about that. A thousand pound profit per property. What that means is, let's say you want to get a, a five thousand pound a month income. Actually, it's only four or five properties you need to achieve that. You don't need 50 properties or 100 properties. Just a small number of the right properties is what you need to achieve financial freedom, which the good news is you're much closer to financial freedom than you probably thought you were. And this leads me on nicely to one of my biggest regrets that I have as a property investor over the last 28 years as an investor myself and 20 years teaching other people is that when I started, I didn't have anyone like me telling me what I should be doing or how I should be doing it. There weren't YouTube videos. YouTube wasn't even invented when I started. Um, there weren't courses and training. I did it myself learning the hard way. And if I could go back and give myself one piece of advice, it would be this. And that would be really focus on buying property. Spend all your spare time and focus. When you put the time and effort in, and you do need to put time and effort in. Don't believe the people who tell you it's completely passive. There's no work required. That's just rubbish. There's definitely work and effort required. But the time and effort you put into property will be rewarded forever because you get paid every single month from the rental income and the long-term capital growth. So the time you put into property is the best rewarded time you're ever going to put into anything. But you need to get on and do it. Get some training, get some help. We can help with you. There are other people who can help with you as well, obviously. But get some training and get on and do it. It's very easy to get life get in the way and distract you. But I promise you the next year or two is going to be such a great buying opportunity. There are going to be people who take action and do it right now. And there's going to be a whole load of people who sit and think about it. They're not sure. They wait on the sidelines. And five, 10 years down the line, they're going to kick themselves. And say, why on earth? I was aware of what Why on earth didn't I get involved when I had the opportunity? And they're going to kick themselves from missing out. You don't want to feel that pain of regret. So I really would encourage you. The advice I'd give myself when I went 20 years back is, Simon, focus on this. Really make sure. Because I was dabbling. I was doing it as a hobby because I didn't have anyone like me telling me what I should be doing. And the final thing I want to share with you is kind of five top tips that I've kind of pulled together, having been teaching people like you for over 20 years how to do this. And they are, number one, first of all, have an open mind. Recognize you don't know what you don't know. Even if you're a successful investor, you had lots of great results. There are things you don't know yet. So always have that inquisitive, open mind and be a lifelong learner. Secondly, number two, value your time. Time is your most precious resource. You can always earn more money, but you can't get your time back. And I see so many people, they get into property, they start spending their time doing the wrong things like managing their own property. And I get it why people do it. I did it at first, but you fall into the landlord trap where you're doing more management that you're actually buying and you make the money buying. So I would encourage you to really value your time, get other people to help you, maybe family members, maybe virtual assistants, eventually part-time or full-time people or letting agents, just value your time to make sure you're focusing on the high value activities. Number three, network, network, network. Your network is your net worth. The more people you know in your industry, the more successful you're going to be. The more people you can pick up the phone to and get some help, the more people you can potentially work with in the future. I cannot tell you how much I've benefited from the things I've learned going to network meetings, the people I've met and connected, the deals, the joint ventures that have come out of that. And I'm someone who would never have liked to go and meet a bunch of strange people in the past. I was very, very shy. And I had to push myself to go networking. But I promise you, it's not as scary as you think. Certainly our property investor network meetings are very friendly. They'll welcome you in. And most people at those meetings are fairly new on their property journey. We have about 20% of the people who are very, very experienced who go because they value the networking. But most people at a PIN meeting are pretty new. So go along and give it a try and build your network and commit to go on a regular basis. Number four out of my five top tips 
is get some accountability. Look, we might set our goals, we decide what we're going to do, but most people, we get busy, we get distracted, and we believe our own excuses while we haven't taken action. So I would really encourage you to get some support, get some accountability from a friend or a coach, ideally someone who's who's not too close to you, they can be objective and impartial and really help you move forward. And number five is work on your mindset. I know a lot of people who kind of know what to do, but they fail to take action because they've got fear, they're worried about making mistakes, or they're worried about what other people might think about them. Working on your mindset is really important. I think your success is probably 80% down to your mindset, not just what you know. So those are my top five tips. Have an open mind, value your time, network, 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 get some accountability, and work on your mindset. The final thing I'd like to do, and it's a bit of an invitation, really, if you've not been to one of our property investor network meetings, you definitely want to get along, see what you're missing out on. There are 50 around the UK every month, apart from August and December, where we have big um, national virtual meetings and definitely worth going to as well. But come along to your local meetings. You'll meet local people in the area like you who are investing and who want to connect and learn with other people. And it's about surrounding yourself with like minded people so there are 50 meetings around the uk most are physical there are a few virtual ones as well we also now have uh some pre meetings in the netherlands uh, we also have them in the uae opening up in dubai and we will be spreading around the globe over the next 12 to 24 months so it's probably going to be one close to you you can go to our website which is pinmeeting.co.uk there's going to be a link uh below this video come and click on that and find out where your local meeting is, check the date, put it in your diary, book your place. It's 20, 25 pounds to come along. But guess what? If you've never been to a PIN meeting before, you can come as our guest. All you have to do is go to the page you want, scroll down to the bottom where it normally says um, select payment option, click where it says voucher code, type in your details, and the code you want to use is the word YouTube, type that in, it will bypass the payment page and let you come to your very first meeting for free. Obviously, you only get to use that once, but once you've seen how amazing it is and what you've been missing out on, I'm sure you're going to want to go back again. And if you have been before, you can give that code to family, friends, work colleagues who might also benefit in coming along to uh, one of our network meetings. So I do hope this has been useful for you. Uh, as the Chinese proverb says, when's the best time to plant a tree? Well, 20 years ago is the best time, but the second best time is right now. So as long as you're educated, recognize now is an incredible opportunity with all the uncertainty, with all the chaos in the market, if you know what you're doing, there will be some fantastic opportunities. So as ever, I encourage you to invest with knowledge, invest with skill. Please like the video, make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon, put a comment below. I look forward to sharing with you in the next video and book your local PIN meeting. The link is below this video. See you very soon, see you in the next video. I do hope you got massive value from watching this YouTube video. I'd encourage you to click on the link below to come and do the online training with me. And I've got another video lined up for you, which I think is also gonna be really useful that you should watch once you've registered for the online training with me. So invest with knowledge, invest with skill. I'll see you very soon.